Okay. Uh, the article I chose for article critique number five is uh, by the author Derek T. Smith in 2009. It's uh, entitled The Development and Validation of a Rating Scale for Wind Jazz Improvisation Performance. And it's uh, out of the Journal of Research and Music Education. Um, in this article, Smith tries to continue upon previous research for developing reliable assessment for wind jazz improvisation. The purpose of the study was to construct and validate a rating scale for collegiate wind jazz improvisation performance. And so the author notes that, that jazz education has made significant strides since its beginnings in the 40s. And um, improvisation is at the very core of the development of jazz musicians, but there is a lack of reliable materials to assess improvisation performance. Um, and we know from the national standards that improvisation is one of the standards um, crucial to music education and something that music educators um, need to incorporate into their curriculum and uh, for that reason, there's been a, a huge influx, especially over the last 20 years, of uh, jazz uh, programs, especially in the middle and high schools, um, and also into the collegiate level. Um, so the author, Smith, wanted to develop a wind jazz improvisation evaluation scale. And so he just titles that WJIES and that it could be adaptive and flexible to the creative and fluid nature of improvisation. So what uh, the study included was an evaluation of five collegiate jazz wind performers and one professional jazz trombone player. Um, after evaluating the initial skills of the players, uh, you just had them improvise um, uh, short exercises and uh, evaluated them to place them into groups. He placed them into three groups, the intermediate group, advanced group, and superior group. Um, so the superior group included a graduate student and the professional. The advanced um, group had uh, impro uh, improvisers that were not quite to that level, and then the intermediate group was um, those that had a little bit of experience but really uh, didn't have refined um, improvisational skills. <clears throat> he then had a host of professors, educators, and performers adjudicate their improvisations with two jazz play-along tracks, and he used three different uh, evaluation techniques. The first evaluation technique he used was a previously developed um, evaluation scale out of uh, Downbeat Magazine, which was a popular uh, jazz publication. And it was called the uh, Individual Jazz Improvisation and Evaluation Scale. So this scale um, basically rated the improvisations against the ideal improvisation that you would find uh, from uh, master improvisers like uh, Miles Davis or John Coltrane and, and me measured the improvisations against that ideal sound. Um, the second one, uh, the second scale that he used was the one that he developed, which is a 14 factor um, scale, the, the wind jazz improvisation evaluation scale. And um, the way that that scale was different was that he took into account, uh, he took into account two things, the performance skills and creative development exhibited during the performance. Um, and the third evaluation scale was just a, a, a globally um, used rating system um, that's similar to just the, the traditional approach to adjudicating choirs or bands or orchestras. Um, so it looked at things like uh, good intonation, appropriate rhythm and timing, appropriate use of uh, scales and harmonies, those types of things. And so what he did was he took those, um, the results of all the adjudicators from those three scales, and he put them into something called an MTMM matrix. Um, for all three of the groups, the intermediate, advanced, and superior group, to check for uh, reliability and validity 
um, for his developed scale. Um, so the results showed that the reliability of the Win Jazz Improvisation Evaluation Scale, the one that the, the author developed, uh, the reliability was high and it was very similar to the previously used scales that uh, were also used. Um, it didn't really present any new evaluation factors that were not already previously in use, but it did kind of organize the factors in assessing the the, imp, uh, the improvisations into two groups. So the, the assessment of performance skills, so just basic technical um, skills of playing the instrument, and uh, the assessment of creativity. And so that was the goal, was to make it a little bit more adaptive and flexible so that you could assess um, you know, like an avant-garde free jazz improv uh, improvisation that uh, is very, very different than, say, a bebop improvisation that's very um, technically sound and uh, very defined. Um, and just by the very nature of jazz, there's a lot of different styles. So he wanted his rating system to be flexible enough to uh, provide accurate results. And uh, he felt that his uh, evaluation scale provided a sequence for jazz educators. So um, he, he thought that it was most appropriate to teach performance skills at the novice level. Um, you know, the basics of playing the instrument, the basics of using scales and harmonies and, and aural training. And um, by doing that, you build confidence, which is really kind of the biggest hurdle for uh, young uh, improvisers is, is having the con uh, the confidence to kind of just leap right in and, and do it. And after they've developed those performance skills, then uh, develop the skills of creativity and imagination um, later. So I feel that the study, it really didn't provide any new um, information to be used by educators. I mean, the author states that it does, but it's really not anything new. The study is simply an exploration into the continued development of assessment for jazz improv, which there isn't really a whole lot of research and uh, assessment strategies being used. And so for that reason, the article is pretty beneficial. Um, I thought that there were a few problems in the study, uh, mainly the way that he grouped the subjects, uh, he kind of just used his preconceived um, notion of what an advanced improviser sounds like and an intermediate uh, improviser sounds like and somebody that's superior. And so there was really no accurate scale that he used to group um, the subjects before he used uh, his, his scale that he developed. Um, the other thing that he did was he kind of made some grandiose claims that his uh, wind jazz improvisation evaluation scale could be used to teach uh, uh, improvisations in elementary and secondary music lessons and it's I think without uh, a lot more research and especially including uh, varying grade levels it's kinda hard to make those claims accurately um, he really he only tested uh, advanced musicians, collegiate musicians, and professional musicians. He, he didn't test uh, high school level or middle school level, even elementary level uh, improvisers. So to make that claim is a little uh, off base. But um, overall, I, I thought the article was uh, beneficial to my research, and um, it's something that. Is, is important because there's not a whole lot of research being done on uh, the assessment of jazz improvisation.